Danube SRI stands for the International Center for Advanced Studies on River Sea Systems. Danube SRI is going to be a distributed pan-European research infrastructure that will facilitate interdisciplinary research in river sea systems. That's one of the key things with Danubis, it brings together people with a variety of disciplines. So I'm primarily a, a, an ocean scientist who looks at open oceans and coastal waters, whereas I have colleagues who are more interested in upstream rivers or might be interested in deltas or estuaries. It's about bringing together scientists from different backgrounds to work together to understand the connections between freshwater and the marine part also with a focus on transitional environments, deltas, estuaries and lagoons. Transitional areas are very important for mankind because most of uh, productivity happens in transitional areas in lagoons where you have uh, high, extremely high biodiversity. It is very important for the economy of the people living there. Uh, they live from, uh, from fishing, for example. They live from tourists, because that's where tourists come. Um, it, it is one of the most important areas a country can have. Till now, humanity has not been able to provide solutions that can take into account all the aspects of natural sciences and human society development in order to have a proper management of river sea systems without generating side effects. It is important because we do not have scientific understanding of the entire system. We cannot even define which are the offshore boundaries where the rivers impact the seas. And uh, one of the best examples is at the Danube mouths. During exceptionally high waters of the Danube, the Danube waters uh, cover about one-third towards half of the Black Sea. Where are the areas of interaction? What happens there? These are all questions for which we need answers. And all these topics, all these issues, I think these are uh, issues that you, in my opinion, can only solve sustainable in the long end if you address uh, issues at a full system scale. So that's what makes, for me, uh, Danubius Arai quite unique. And this is interesting also for the Rhine to see, okay, well, we focus, of course, in our super site on the Delta, on the lower part, but we work together closely with, uh, with our German friends on the uh, middle Rhine super site. And maybe in the future, there will be super sites added as well in the Meuse, so that we can work together uh, trying to create more understanding about how the system is working from the mountains all the way to the sea. Danubius Sarai is a Romanian initiative. Back in the uh, beginning of the 1990s, um, after the change of the uh, communist regime, the Danube Delta, which was threatened to be close to destruction because of the policies implemented here. Yeah. The authorities tried to protect the Delta and the Danube Delta obtained the status of Biosphere Reserve. So the Romanian government has had the initiative to open the Danube Delta for research to the international community, to experts worldwide. We had a good start in the year 2006 when on this houseboat we, GeoEcomar, organized together with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers an international workshop that brought together experts from all over the world, experts in deltas and estuaries. Initially, the concept was to develop a center for the Danube, Danube Delta, Black Sea. But starting with 2011, we invited our partners, scientific partners from all over Europe, to come and work with us to develop this plan of an infrastructure dedicated to river sea systems. So current monitoring of river sea systems is currently undertaken largely to assess compliance against various regulatory and statutory requirements. The way the data is collected, however, 
isn't that useful to understand the processes which govern these very dynamic environments. So there is a need to develop a systematic framework which enables us to understand how these environments are changing and responding to environmental change, the impact that that's having on the ecosystem services that these environments are providing to us, and also enable us to forecast various management scenarios or indeed climate change scenarios and impacts that they might have going into the future. To address these scientific challenges, Danubius has brought together 12 super sites across Europe. These super sites represent uh, catchments and uh, estuaries and deltas as well as coastal environments which are both of scientific value but also of national strategic value for each of the countries involved. These are supported by four science nodes across the whole of the infrastructure. The first is the observation node which provides uh, both spatial and temporal data derived from satellite data as well as in situ observations. The second is the analysis node which provides both more sophisticated analysis of, for example, emerging pollutants as well as providing the standards and a common framework in which to ensure sampling and measurements are undertaken systematically across the whole of the infrastructure. We then have the modelling node which provides modelling capability to fill the gaps that we have in the observations but also and critically to model uh, scenarios from climate change scenarios to management scenarios into the future. The impact node then also helps that articulation of that science to, to be of, of societal value, to ensure that the infrastructure both stimulates uh, sustainable economic growth as well as is of much wider societal value and of course protects the environment. The data centre provides the infrastructure to collate all the data from the, the, the infrastructure and provides a one-stop shop for accessing that data for both science and policy and industry. The Technology Transfer Office provides a, a mechanism for which we can then take any innovation from within infrastructure and make that of potential value to society. For wider societal engagement and also to promote the education and understanding of these complex river sea systems, we also have an e-learning uh, office which will deliver electronic teaching material to schools and universities and colleges to help promote that understanding and help drive the science forward. The whole of Danubia Sarai is supported and coordinated by a hub which is sited in Marigul in the Danube Delta, the site from which the whole of this infrastructure was actually envisaged right from the start. Yeah, well, the observation node is one of uh, four nodes in uh, Danubius. It uh, includes providing data on in situ measurements, measurements taken uh, in water or uh, in river sea systems, but also taking satellite data, particularly from the new European Copernicus series of satellites. It also has a role though to um, provide some kind of coordination between the different observations taken within the super sites and other entities within uh, Danubius. So the aim is to provide consistency in observations, to have certain standards, uh, protocols to follow, uh, but also to get involved in the training aspect so that uh, any scientist wanting to use some of the observation equipment can be trained in use of that equipment, appropriate uh, analysis of uh, the results that come from it. My role in Danubius is largely uh, attached to the observation node, so as part of the project I'll be helping uh, to develop the, the methods for measuring the water quality of lakes and rivers and, and estuaries and, and coastal areas uh, using observations that we, uh, we glean from satellites in orbit above the Earth. And here we are today on Loch uh, Te to get some uh, measurements of uh, reflectance of how much uh, light does the water reflect in order to validate some of the satellite uh, uh, data. So at the front of the boat we have uh, three spectroradiometers that they measure the quantity and the quality of the photons that they are coming uh, from the sun through the atmosphere, the photons that are reflected by the water uh, surface. Well, the atmospheric properties above water and land, uh, coastal environments, changes quite dramatically depending on 
industry, uh, depending on temperature, um, evaporation of water and so on. These all add to the atmospheric properties, the aerosols in the air, which then attenuate light between the sun and the ground or the water surface. Uh, and that affects the atmospheric corrections that we can apply to satellites. So knowing what the atmospheric aerosols are enables us to then tune the atmospheric corrections so we get accurate estimates of the light leaving the water from the satellite and then we can get good estimates of the chlorophyll sediment concentrations, colour dissolved organic matter uh, from our satellite measurements. So this is basically measurements of how light is absorbed and scattered by different particles within uh, the water column. And with this understanding, what we're able to do is then develop models uh, that we can use to analyse and process our satellite data to then retrieve uh, information on, on the water quality of, of water bodies like this and indeed uh, rivers and, and coastal areas as well. We have uh, in Danubius a modeling node here in Venice because we have a long uh, expertise on modeling transitional environments. Transitional environments are typically estuaries or lagoons or things that are in between the open sea and the land. In science, models can be used for a lot of things. Uh, the main things are, for example, the evaluation of scenarios. So, what if scenarios? For example, weather forecasting or marine forecasting, so in terms of storms or uh, in terms of pollutions also. So, uh, if you have the uh, weather and marine forecasts, you can also predict where pollutants will go. In Venice, we de developed uh, models that are able to predict high water in order to uh, uh, early warn the uh, municipality, for example, and all the citizens. The outputs of the models are used to evaluate uh, different scenarios in terms of dredging, for example, or in terms of uh, uh, ecosystem evolution of the lagoon. So Venice is a good example of these kind of problems. You can tell what the lagoon will look like in, uh, in the next uh, 10 to 50 years, for example, if I build the mobile barriers. Then I can understand how, uh, how often I will have to close the barriers and what this means to the water exchange between the lagoon and the sea. And uh, therefore, you can, you can use numerical models also for planning. All the software we create, all the models we develop are freely available on the web. That is very important for us because that gives the possibility to, to others to use that expertise and to use the knowledge that we are building here. Danubius has provided a unique opportunity for the long-term monitoring and uh, predictive numerical capabilities for two Catalan deltas. Those deltas are very vulnerable right now but that will get even worse under future climates. So uh, Danubius is and I hope will be an excellent catalyzer to make us think and when I say we it means researchers but also the local administrations, the government, we have a, a need to predict a, a storm impact before it hits and for that we also need those forecasting models. We are now in the beginning of September. Last week of August there was a, a torrential rain event because it doesn't rain so often in here, it's mostly dry climate. Uh, that rain event uh, dragged a lot of debris and pollution towards the coast. Uh, the coastal waters were no longer good for swimming or for water sports. But we can predict that and we can tell the coastal authorities or even the beach users when that is going to happen and for how long uh, bathing will not be safe or even which areas. And that is again one of the byproducts of Danubius. The analysis node will provide state of the art capabilities, that is, expertise, instrumentation, protocols, and techniques to undertake research in river sea systems. So, for example, we can trace and measure emerging pollutants and microplastics and assess their toxicity levels in all environments, from the land to the sea, um, 
and ultimately in the um, aquatic life and then in humans. So here we are in the lab where we brought the water samples as soon as we were out of the water uh, at uh, Loch Te. So here uh, we, collect, uh, we have collected samples to uh, analyze several uh, parameters of the water. This is, uh, we're referring to bio-optical parameters, some chemical parameters, and generally uh, water quality uh, indicators. We've been doing the same analysis, the same sampling at different parts of the world, and we collect all this data together to develop some algorithms that they are globally uh, applicable. So we can take the algorithms that we develop here and apply to different river assist systems across the globe. Uh, one of the key features of the analysis node is a set of comments, which is basically a standardized uh, set of protocols and techniques to do sampling and an analysis uh, to ensure comparability of measurements within and between uh, river systems. One of the main challenges today is to compare results coming from different laboratories or different areas in a river basin. So what we want to do is to ensure a common framework to be able to compare these results and understand them in an integrated way. The structure we've developed in Danubius um, wants to create better science, which will hopefully uh, create long-lasting impact for society and economic development. If you need to talk about the impact of Danubius arrive for the common people, for, for, the, for cities, for towns, uh, etc., I'd say that m most of them are either directly on the river or uh, at least in, a, in the catchment of a river. So that's the case for 98% of the European population. So at some point there is an impact of how your river sea systems work. I strongly believe you always, if you want to change something in your system, you talk about stakeholders and everybody has a different stake. 15 years ago there were floodings in the Rhine and in the Meuse. And in order to deal with that, uh, we had to take a very drastic approach in the Netherlands. And we set up a program that's called uh, Room for the Rivers. So that all, it's already in the name. So basically you create more space for the rivers. So if there is a big flooding, there's area where the water can uh, stay. Certainly some people uh, will lose from that. So maybe the farmers who have uh, their parcels on the, on the floodplains. So you need to compensate for that. But others like, there's more room for nature, there is uh, uh, opportunity for tourism, so other parties will benefit. So if you start a discussion, say, so okay, let's see how we can optimize these kinds of solutions and involve stakeholders into the process. So that's also one of the aspects that could be brought uh, under the magnifying glass uh, within the New Year's Rye. Early on in the vision for the new base RI, we need to look at how the outputs or the significant outputs we're going to have from the project can be effectively exploited. The idea of having a tech transfer office is to engage with the researchers and with the industry to ensure that the material we produce has an impact on society and the economy. What we're doing is taking the sort of scientific output and looking at the sort of the commercial aspect of it, how that could be applicable for industry possibly for society as well, to inform society, to make sure that our outputs are exploited effectively. This is really important that the science doesn't stand still. It has to be put out there and exploited, so it could be taken by another project, for example, another infrastructure, but ideally by an industry as well, so someone would take it and commercially develop. And the idea of the TTO was to make sure that our intellectual property is protected as part of that process. What I'm doing right now with my colleagues at, at Danubus is to make sure that our offer is directly relevant for those businesses. So uh, the, the interest can be very different. We are uh, addressing dredging companies, for instance, because 
uh, their business is entirely based on, on the knowledge of the, of the very specific uh, waterways that, that they are in charge of, of dredging and uh, being able to understand exactly what is the sediment flux, the, the, the periods where you, where you need to do the dredging and where you should put the sediments and a lot of factors are, are, are there that are, um, that are influencing how the, the dredging should be done. If it is done properly, they can save a lot of money. So obviously they are, they are very interested in what we are doing because we combine all the expertise that this kind of company is, is interested in. We are able to observe, we are able to analyze, we are able to model, to model the, the flux, we are able to understand what is the socioeconomic impact of, uh, of uh, reforming those waterways or not. In Romania, for instance, we are preparing the structural funds application to build the Romanian components of Danubius Sarai, the hub of the project, which is the core of the, uh, of the infrastructure, and the Danube Delta super site, as well as the data center. The hub of Danubius Sarai will be situated in the biosphere reserve of the Danube Delta and will provide research laboratories that cover entire spectrum of life sciences and geosciences, equipped with state-of-art instruments and will provide data, expertise to users from Europe and beyond to advance our understanding in river sea systems. Collectively, these facilities make the Danube Delta the ideal research spot for better understanding the impact of eutrophication in the condition of climate change on Danube, Danube Delta Black Sea systems. There are many, many services associated with the, with the data center, but I guess the most important service would be uh, to offer access uh, to the stored data to the public and to the, and to the researchers uh, all over the world. It's highly attractive to be involved in the Nubius Array because it's really in the heart of what we say at Deltares. Uh, we try to be knowledge entrepreneurs uh, by engaging, by trying to bring in the best ideas you have, uh, combine the best ideas. I think we can have the opportunity to create something great. I think we should bring awareness to the wider public of the, the changes or the challenges that are ahead of us related to all the human activities in rivers and in seas and also uh, in connection with the change of the climate. When people share data, it usually is beneficial to all. This idea of protecting your data is probably the way of the past. In the future we should share our data because that's how we'll actually advance science. Traditional research projects have a lifespan of three to five years which makes stakeholder engagement quite difficult. Danubius has the very real advantage of the fact that it will transcend many research projects, which enables us to deliver and develop a longer and lasting relationship with a whole range of stakeholders. It's only by working in partnership with both industry and policy, for example, that we can really then start to tackle the issues around climate change and deliver the solutions which are of genuine value to society. At the end of these 10 years, we see that the idea matured enough to be legally recognized at a global level. The success of Danubius RI will be full in the moment when good science will be produced, developed for the better. It's a sign that we leave something behind and I think that's extremely important for all of us.